Join Tiny Tales. Paradise for the Spark of Thunder and Lightning. A fun bedtime story for kids. This educational kids story teaches about the science of thunder and lightning through colorful animations and a warm narration. Perfect for bedtime or classroom learning. Subscribe for weekly fairy tales and moral stories. The Spark of Thunder and Lightning. Chapter 1. The Sky's Big Mystery. In the cheerful village of Sky Town, where clouds puffed like cotton candy and rainbows arched after every rain, lived a curious boy named Leo, at ten years old. Leo had wild black hair, a grin as bright as a sunny day, and a knack for asking questions. He loved exploring Sky Town's meadows, where breezes whispered secrets and fireflies danced at night like tiny stars. But what fascinated Leo most was the sky especially when it roared with thunder and flashed with lightning. One breezy afternoon, Leo sat on a hill, sketching clouds in his notebook. His best friend, a chatty blue jay named Flicker, perched on his shoulder, pecking at a berry. What you thinking about? Leo Flicker chirped. Those clouds look like fluffy sheep, but I bet you're up to something bigger. Leo pointed at a dark cloud on the horizon. I want to know where thunder and lightning come from. They're so loud and bright, like the sky's throwing a party. But why do they happen? And are they good or bad for Sky Town? Flicker flapped his wings. Big questions. Thunder's like a giant drum, and lightning's like a sparkler. But they can scare folks and shake trees. Maybe they're born in the clouds. Leo's eyes sparkled. That's it. We'll go on a sky quest to learn the truth about thunder and lightning, how they're born, what they do, and why they matter. Let's find the sky keepers, the ones who know all about the weather. Flicker tilted his head. Sky keepers, they're up in the clouds. Leo, how do we get there? Leo grinned, pulling a kite from his backpack. With this, the wind's strong today. We'll fly to the clouds and solve the mystery. With his kite tied to a rope and flicker cheering, Leo caught the wind and soared toward the clouds, ready to uncover the secrets of thunder and lightning. The sky quest had begun. Chapter 2. The Cloud Council The kite lifted Leo and Flicker high above Sky Town, where clouds floated like giant marshmallows. They landed on a fluffy cloud, soft as a pillow, where the Cloud Council met. The council was a group of wispy figures made of mist, led by Nimbus, a puffy cloud with a booming voice. Welcome. Leo and Flicker Nimbus said, You're here to learn about thunder and lightning, aren't you? Leo nodded, clutching his notebook. Yes. Where do they come from? Are they good or bad for Skytown? Nimbus swirled, his edges sparkling. Thunder and lightning are born right here in the clouds, and they're a mix of helpful and tricky let me explain their birth. It's all about water and air. He showed Leo a cloud full of tiny water droplets. Clouds are made when warm air rises, carrying water vapor from rivers and lakes. Up here, it cools and turns into droplets. When clouds get big and heavy, like during a storm, the droplets bump and rub, creating something called static electricity. Flicker squawked. Electricity. Like when my feathers stick up after rubbing a balloon. Exactly. Nimbus laughed. That electricity builds up in the cloud until zap it jumps as a spark of lightning. That spark heats the air super fast, making it expand and boom. That's thunder. Leo scribbled notes. So, lightning's a giant spark, and thunder's the sound of air exploding. That's wild, but why do they matter? Nimbus pointed to a meadow below. Lightning can start fires, which is tricky 
It might burn plants if we're not careful, but it also helps the earth. Come meet Zephyr, the wind keeper. She'll tell you more. Leo and Flicker hopped on the kite, gliding to another cloud, excited to learn how lightning and thunder affected Skytown. Chapter 3 The Windy Lessons Zephyr, the wind keeper, was a breezy figure with hair that swirled like a tornado. She met Leo and Flicker on a gusty cloud, where winds whistled like a choir. Welcome to my windy domain, Zephyr said. Nimbus told me you're curious about lightning's effects. It's a powerful force, with good and not so good sides. Leo opened his notebook. I saw lightning hit a tree once it looked scary. Does it always cause trouble? Zephyr shook her head. Not always. Lightning's tricky, but it does amazing things. Let's start with the not so good. When lightning strikes, it's super hot hotter than the sun's surface that can spark fires in dry grass or trees, which might harm forests or fields. Flicker shivered. Yikes. That's why animals hide during storms. But what's the good stuff? Zephyr smiled. Lightning helps the earth grow. When it zaps through the air, it mixes nitrogen with oxygen, creating a kind of fertilizer that rain washes into the soil. Plants love it. It helps them grow strong, which means more food for Skytown. Leo's eyes widened. So, lightning's like a gardener for the earth. That's awesome. What about thunder? Does it do anything? Thunder's mostly a sound, Zephyr said. It's the air clapping after lightning's heat, but it warns animals and people to find shelter, keeping them safe. Want to see lightning's effects up close? Visit Terra, the Earth Keeper, down in the meadow. Leo and Flicker zoomed down on the kite, landing in a grassy field, eager to see how lightning shaped the earth. Chapter 4 The Earth's Gifts and Challenges in Skytown's Meadow Terra, the Earth Keeper, greeted Leo and Flicker. She was a sturdy figure with dirt-smudged cheeks and a crown of flowers. Leo, Flicker, you're here to learn about lightning's mark on the earth, Terra said, pointing to a charred tree. See that lightning struck it last week? Leo frowned. That looks bad. Does lightning always hurt the earth? Tara shook her head. Not always. That tree might look sad, but lightning's fire can clear old plants, making room for new ones to grow. It's like nature's way of tidying up. And remember the fertilizer Zephyr mentioned? It's here in the soil, helping these flowers bloom brighter. Flicker hopped on a daisy. So, lightning's like a gardener and a cleaner. But what about people? Does it help us? Tara nodded. It does. The nitrogen from lightning helps crops grow, which means more food for Skytown's farmers. But we must be careful. Lightning can strike houses or people if they're not safe during storms. That's why we stay indoors and avoid tall trees when thunder roars. Leo scribbled furiously. So, lightning's good for plants and food, but we need to respect its power. What can we do to stay safe? Great question, Tara said. Stay inside during storms. Don't touch metal and never stand under a lone tree. Want to see how lightning and thunder work together? Visit Reina, the rain keeper, by the river. Leo and Flicker dashed to the river, their kite trailing behind, ready to learn the final piece of the storm puzzle. Chapter 5. The Rainy Connection By the Sparkle River, Reina, the rain keeper, stood under a shimmering umbrella made of raindrops. Her dress sparkled like dew, and she smiled at Leo and Flicker. You've learned about lightning's spark and thunder's boom, she said. Now... 
Let's see how they team up with rain to make Storm special. Leo sat on a rock, notebook ready. Storms are loud and bright. But how do they help Skytown? And why do they feel so wild? Raina twirled her umbrella. Storms are nature's big show. Lightning lights up the sky. Thunder warns everyone to stay safe. And rain waters the earth. Together, they keep Skytown green and growing. Rain carries lightning's nitrogen to the soil, feeding plants. It also fills rivers and lakes, giving us water to drink. Flicker flapped. But storms can flood stuff. I saw a muddy mess in Skytown last month. Raina nodded. True. Too much rain can flood fields or wash away soil, which is tricky for farmers. But storms also clean the air, washing away dust and making it fresh. Balance's key storms need to be just right, and lightning's energy scientists study it to make electricity for homes. Leo's jaw dropped. Lightning can power lights. That's so cool. But how do we balance the good and bad? By respecting nature, Raina said. We build houses with lightning rods to guide strikes safely to the ground. Farmers plant crops that love rain but won't drown. And we listen to Thunder's warnings. Want to share this with Skytown? Leo grinned. Yes. Let's tell everyone how thunder and lightning are born and why they're important. Chapter 6 The Sky Festival Back in Skytown Leo and Flicker organized a sky festival to share their discoveries. The village square glowed with lanterns shaped like clouds, and stalls offered berry pies and kite-making kits. Leo took the stage. Flicker perched on his shoulder and told the crowd about their sky quest. Thunder and lightning are born in clouds, Leo said, holding up his notebook. Water droplets rub together, making electricity that zaps as lightning. The zap heats the air, and boom. That's thunder lightning helps plants grow by making fertilizer in the air, and rain washes it to the soil but it can start fires or flood fields. So we stay safe by staying inside during storms, the crowd cheered, and kids begged to join Leo's Sky Squad, a club to learn about weather. Nimbus, Zephyr, Terra, and Reyna appeared as misty figures, waving from the clouds. You've spread the word. Leo Nimbus boomed, Skytown's brighter because of you. A girl named Mia asked, Can I learn about storms? Two, Leo smiled. You bet. Watch the sky, ask questions, and work together. Storms are nature's way of keeping the earth alive. That night, as stars twinkled, Leo and Flicker sat on the hill. We solved the mystery. Flicker. Leo said, Thunder and lightning are powerful, but they help Skytown grow. Flicker chirped, and they're awesome. What's our next quest? Leo looked at the sky. Maybe we'll find out why rainbows appear. But for now, let's watch the clouds dance. And so, Skytown thrived, its fields green and rivers full. Thanks to Leo, Flicker, and the spark of thunder and lightning. The end.